Here she is right there. Yeah, hello, we finished. Those monsters won't be tinkling in your water supply anymore. Wonderful. Thank you for your help. And that's how it's done. More where that came from, too. Lots of people with problems out there. And gall to make them go away. You're a real pro at this, Alvin. Hey. Hmm. No fever. How are you feeling? I don't seem to have any strength. <laughs> I like how she's saying this nonchalantly too. Um, have you been eating properly? I've never eaten. Ever? Through Sylph, I drew life from the air. With Undine's power, I received sustenance from the water. What's she talking about? I guess the spirits gave her all the energy she needed. Well, now you're gonna have to nourish yourself the old-fashioned way. I see. So this is what you call hunger. <laughs> Fascinating. So, should we rest at the inn? Now that you mention it, I could use some grub myself. And the idol... Oh, the item... <laughs> I was about to say item auto. Anyway, the auto item system has been unlocked. So the way the item... I did it again. God damn it. The way the auto item system works is if you go into strategies. If you press start right here, you could go into your auto items. So the way you could set this up, uh, it works in priority. So if whatever's in priority one, that's what they're going to focus more on than two or three and so on and so forth. So you could set I certain items, uh, certain conditions, so if you want to make it so you only use life bottles when three or more members of your party are KO'd. For me, I'll just keep it at one member KO'd. They'll pretty much immediately use a life bottle once this condition is met. And you could even set restrictions until a certain amount of items are left. So what I usually do is that I set life bottles to be used until you have none left. Because, I don't know, more often than not, you could actually control when people are going to die before they even do so. And I don't like them using this because they will use these to no end. Like, even if you set it like this, so HP is less than 20%, once they reach less than 20%, they will use your apple gels. A lot. And well, usually whatever I do with this is just like I set it until they have five left. That way I can control it for myself from there on out. Same goes for orange gels and TP. And once you get more items, then you could set more into the uh, freaking list. And you'll even get uh, auto item expansions where you can have more priorities on this list. So you'll get like anything below five, so six and onward. Anyway, that's enough explanations out of me. And I forgot to set uh, Alvin's Lillian Lord stats. So let's try to do that right now. You know, for being a, a seasoned mercenary, he doesn't have much in way of level. Which is why I'm going to be investing right here, and he already has the first air, the first thing of nodes right here filled out. So we're halfway there, pretty much. So what do I invest? Oh wait, I can't invest in anything right now. He only has one more to use. <laughs> Forgot it. I didn't set into these two. What do I? Yeah, what do I do next? Well, what should I be going for next? I'm just going to be looking over. Uh, TP combo support, solid guard, so it decreases. Damage by 50% when guarding, and it works with Magic Guard too. I think I might get him Guardian Field next, so into the Psyche. Alright, then as they said, we're going to be going into the inn, but first, let's see if there's anyone we could talk to. Well, there's this item shop that we could go into. We found some 500 gold right there, so that might cover for the inn cost. As far as I know, though, there isn't much in the way of NPCs to talk to, except for this guy right here. What you got to say? There aren't any big cities inland from here, just small mountain villages. But I have heard rumors of a settlement where people maintain ancient traditions of spirit worship. I think that might be where we going, where we, bleh, where we're going into next. I'm sorry for the stuttering. It's just been one big stutterfest this whole time. <laughs> anyway, intelligence work. <sighs> that was quite a sigh. So seriously. You guys are spying for Arjul, right? What? Of course not. 
I've never heard of the Military Powers Act being used against anyone other than Ajul spies. You're thinking too much into this. Why are you so concerned about this? Unless you're spying for Rashagol. No, no. I was just thinking that if you were spying for Ajul, maybe you could use your connections to score me some high-paying intelligence work. Sorry to disappoint you, but I assure you I will pay your fee. You just have to wait a little bit longer. Fair enough. But even with your special friend discount, the interest is piling up. Shit. Anyway, there's another NPC right here. Greetings, brave travelers. Are you well stocked for your journey? This is a wild land and you'll want to be fully prepared before you leave the Sea Haven. Oh, I kinda already left in the first place, but that's beside the point. Merchants don't sell the same weapons, armor, and whatnot to all of their customers. If you want to get the good stuff, you have to expand the shop. As you supply the merchants with various materials, you become a favored customer to their merchant class and your shop level will gradually rise. The higher your shop level gets, the higher the quality of goods you'll be able to buy. So this is something that's pretty damn interesting about Tales of Exilia and One Gall. God damn it. So this is an interesting thing. Like, you have to expand the shops in order to get items out of them, or at least better items. And here's where the material items come in handy. So it's a game system in which you can give materials to Gaul and Gaul to shops increase the selection available in the shop's stock. So as you expand shops, you accumulate points, and when you hit a certain level, your shop level rises and new stock is added. And it lowers when a, and raising your shop level lowers the prices of items sold at the shop. So you could either donate materials, donate gold, or buy items at the shop in order to raise the shop level, or rather give it experience. So, when donating, ma donating materials, you may find that some material types are set as bonus materials and provide more points than usual. And I'll get to explain that right now. So if you go to expand right here, all the shops right now are at level 1. And if we donate uh, ore materials to the item shop, we get double the points for that. And for monster items... We, to the weapon shop, we get double. This always changes up whenever you go to a new area and whatnot. And for right now, insect item materials, uh, they will give triple the points if we donate to either armor or accessory shop. I usually just do to one to get the maximum points out of it, so we donate materials. Since we have uh, freaking spider webs, the points that they offer, that's tripled. And if we try to donate it all right now, we can get the armor shop to level six right now. Neither that or the accessories, you know? Okay, armor. I kind of need armor. Who am I kidding? So, <laughs> we're gonna get a whole bunch of points for that. And we have new items in stock. Look at all that. And item discounts, too, because of it. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And may as well expand the item shop while I'm here. I'm gonna donate everything, even though that barely did anything. God damn it. It's something. Let's see if we can donate monster items. Damn it, that's not enough at all. Fuck it. Yeah, Alright, and what about this? Eh, yeah, level four. Good enough. Oh, wait, wait, I meant to donate. I meant to donate! God damn it. There we go. We get new freaking food items. Uh, the way food works in this game, it's a little bit of a downgrade from previous Tales games. I'll get to explain that in a little bit. So merchants don't get a lot of demand for adventuring goods, so they have to prioritize serving the needs of their best customers. That's why you need to engage in shop expansion to increase the variety of goods that are available to you, while also gradually decreasing the prices in their on their stock. Besides bringing materials to merchants, you can also just give them gold. But there aren't too many people who can afford to do that. <laughs> which is freaking true, which is why we donate materials. Trust me, materials are pretty damn useful in getting better items later on. Hell, even decreasing the prices of them later on. Anyway, just talk to this guy. Welcome. Three rooms, please. But before that, can we get something to eat? Oh, my apologies, but our cook isn't in yet. Hey, is she okay? Can we at least use your kitchen? Yes, please. Help yourself. Your friend looks like she's about to pass out. M my stomach. It really is growling. 
<laughs> and here I thought that was just a silly human expression. Not bad. No, I quite enjoy ingesting calories with you. Okay. Humans should learn to cherish these simple pleasures. This might be her first time sleeping, too. And apparently she never ate before today, either. Who in the world is she? She claims she's Maxwell. That Maxwell? Yeah. She's apparently a spirit in physical form. Well, not just any spirit. The Lord of Spirits. Wielder of the Four Elements. The Eldest Spirit. Maxwell has many names. And now we add Mila to that list? She's supposed to be the spirit Maxwell? You gotta be kidding me. Is Maxwell really that mighty? Of course. That's why this is so hard to swallow. I grew up hearing bedtime stories about Maxwell. What in the world would a spirit like that be trying to destroy? Trying to destroy? What are you referring to? She called it a Spyrex, I think. The device from the laboratory. Hmm. Maybe I should just ask Mila about it. I don't know. You have a nasty habit of poking your nose where it doesn't belong. Your cursed curiosity made me a wanted man too, you know. <sighs> well, think hard before asking, okay? Yeah. You're right. Good morning. Good day, Jude. I was just about to share my plans with Alvin. What is it? I'm thinking of returning to Nia Kara. Is that your hometown? More accurately, it's where my shrine is. If I go back, I might be able to resummon the four. So, she really is Maxwell. This is where you come in, Jude. Will you accompany me to Nia Kara? What? It's true that you brought your current situation upon yourself, but I bear some of the blame as well. I'll put in a good word for you with the people of Nia Kara. I'm sure they'll look after you. Wow, you've put a lot of thought into this. Yes. Remember when you told me I seemed unconcerned? I decided to take that to heart. Mila, you don't need to practice your swordplay anymore? No need to concern yourself with my martial abilities. Well, if nothing else, you know how to swing the pointy end. Okay, I'll come with you. Good. You needn't worry. A little more practice wouldn't hurt, though. You think so? Better safe than sorry. Come find me once you're ready to go. Wait, you're coming with us, Alvin? Why not? I've come this far. All right. Hey, Mila? Hmm? Thanks. Alrighty then. Whole bunch of NPCs now. Ajul has really been flourishing over the last few years. King is broken with long standing custom to make all sorts of needed reforms. Alright. Have you tried Daybreak the Alati region's famous wine? There's no more elegant drink in all of Riza Maxia. Cool. Can't resist a drink after a long voyage. Of course, that's why I always end up drinking too much. Ha ha ha. Ah, good old drinking. Everybody loves it. Everybody. 
everybody. If I could, I would drink right now while that's playing, but screw it. We people of Roshkal tend to look down on the people of Azul as inferior, but they still manage to pull the rug out from under us. The rate at which Azul is advancing is shocking. There are lots of places that have unstable spirit climbs, but the spirit climb in the Alati Sea Haven has always been very calm. It makes the Alati Sea Haven a crucial refueling spot for long voyages. So yeah, we're learning a little bit more of the world as we talk to more NPCs. And at least now I know which NPCs I can talk to, so that's always a good thing. Ships are so cool. When I grow up, I'm going to be a sailor. I'm already reading everything I can about sailing. Maybe you should spend less time reading about boats and more time learning how to swim. Never heard of a sailor who can't even swim. Lady, you've obviously never read One Piece. Then again, I doubt One Piece exists in this world, but my point still stands. Hell, I've never even heard of a pirate that couldn't swim before well, freaking One Piece. Ready to hit the road? Mila, you said it's north of here? How far? Less than half a day's flight time. If we could fly using Sylph's power. Oh, well, I'm afraid my wings are, you know, non-existent. I hope we can find a place to rest along the way. The map showed a village in that direction, so we should be okay. Either way, we can't just stay here. We must press forward. I know, I know. Alrighty then, onward to Neokara. And I just kind of missed a skit right there. Hopefully it'll let me show, see it again. Either that or I might have to go back. And this is a freaking miscellaneous skit. Inside and out. Oops. Gotta straighten my scarf. You sure do love that thing. Don't you? It's one of Fismage's finest. Custom made for yours truly. I don't know much about brands, but it does look good on you. You gotta be careful about what you wear, kid. It's how the world judges a man. I'd rather think what's inside is what counts. Yeah, and this is how what's inside gets projected to the outside. You don't believe some people shape what's outside in order to conceal the ugliness within? <laughs> well, if you can't see through a false front, isn't that your problem? So you blame the victims for being deceived? If that's really what you believe, Alvin, it tells me all I need to know about what's within. Man, <laughs> I sure slipped up this time, huh? Pretty much, and I just keep on running because this guy's freaking chasing me. It's creeping suspicion. Is Milo really that Maxwell? She does act a bit nutty, but she looks normal enough. I think it's true. When I first met her, Mila had the four great spirits with her. What? Get out of here. No, seriously. Fire spirit Efreet, water spirit Undine, wind spirit Sylph, and earth spirit Gnome. It was the first time I'd ever seen them in person, but there was no mistaking who they were. That's a mighty exclusive club. Can't imagine they hang out with a lot of mortal girls. Yeah. Oh god, the guys keep chasing me. Oh god, no way! Oh, why you do this to me, man? No, I do it to you! I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's just keep on attacking these guys, get ourselves a little more experience and potential GP in the process. Alright, let's get the crap out of these guys. And we're already got the freaking overlimit cage almost filled up. And we had it completely filled up at the end. It's a shame I didn't get to use it. Rather, it would have been a waste if I had used it anyway. Yeah, I'm just while I when every time I go through one of these things where we go one town to the next, I'm gonna try to look for those spots in order to find like materials and whatnot because it'd be really good to expand the shops this way. And beautiful feathers, which are uh, bird type materials, I guess. Anyway, oh god, the guys, the enemies, the four. Walking sure is grueling. That's unexpected coming from you. I'm just used to having so fly me everywhere. The only time I ever really walked was when I used Undine to travel across water. I see. Maybe this is your punishment for treating the four great spirits like your personal servants? Servants? They may help out now and then, but they're the ones who pester me. They're like a bunch of bickering in-laws that never go home. Did you just call the four? Bickering in-laws? <laughs> That's one way of putting it, I guess. Then again, we only met the four for like a little bit. 
So we can't really say whether or not what Mila says is true. And again, we don't really know much of their personalities. And again, what exactly would make them the bickering in-laws? I mean, maybe their elements would probably make something like that, but I, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know. Oh, right, it's I had a chain chance. But screw it! Keep on using Demonic Chaos. Actually, I think if... I see things grab. Nope. It's just Demon Fist. Still. Uh, we still got it. Like, the more arts you get, the more freaking linked art opportunities you'll be able to find. So this is why I try to recommend that you try to get arts in the Lilium Orb as soon as you possibly can. Because it really helps out with trying to get linked arts. Anyway, I just got them leveled up right now, so let's try doing that right now. So, what arts can I get them now? So, at the very least, see if we can get them arts. Eh, let's get them level restore. I really need that right now. And while we're at it... Yeah, we'll get vitality right here, and whatever that skill is right there. And stamina. Alright, so we can increase his max HP by 5%. And what do we do from here? Rather... Oh, right, I was going to get her splash. You know what? May as well get the first nodes of, like, the very middle nodes right now. Just so I could just fill out these nodes right here, and then I'll be able to get them as soon as I possibly can. Rather, all at once. You'll see what I mean eventually. Um, I think that was it. I already got Alvin's expanded out. Or at least as far as I can right now. Uh, let's see if we can find more materials, because now we're going a different path. And yes, a whole bunch of stuff. Partners in Klein. I don't know if that was a racist joke or not, but screw it, I'm going to assume they meant crime. Unless it has to do with spirit climbs, but I don't know. Compared to Fenmont's night climb, the sky in Ajul sure is bright. That's true. The spirit climbs here are much more stable. What are you talking about? What do you intend to climb? C-L-I-M-E. Surely the great Lady Maxwell knows all about the subject? Don't flatter yourself by assuming I recognize every arbitrary word you humans create. Human arrogance can be so trying. Mila, do you know what Riza Maxi is made of? As if I wouldn't know? The power of spirits composes the entire natural world. Right. The term spirit climb refers to the balance of spirit power. When that power is out of balance, nature can become polarized in one direction. That's why there are unusual spirit climbs, like the Perpetual Night of Fenmont. I see. Thank you. Now I understand. You're very good at explaining things. My pleasure. Oh, I see how it is. I guess I'm just an arrogant human compared to little old innocent Jude. <laughs> Pretty much. He explained it properly. All you did was spell out climb. Anyway, let's just beat the crap out of more enemies. You know what? Screw you, Alvin. I don't want to be chained to you or nobody else. But this also gives me a chance to explain. If you're not linked to anyone, the bar to the left does not fill up. So if you intend to actually get linked arts, uh, well, you're going to have to be linked pretty much 24-7. If you want to stand a chance. Anyway, and as far as I can tell, like the bar, if you have it somewhat filled up already... Um, it's still, it's, it sticks there. It doesn't, like, completely get lost. Well, it doesn't get lost if you decide not to be linked to anyone else. That's the only way I can explain it, honestly. <laughs> so, you don't have to worry about, like, if you unlink with everyone else, then all of a sudden you lose whatever part of the gauge you're filling up right now. And, yeah. Actually, I better keep looking for more stuff while I can. Because the more you explore areas, the more, like, hidden stuff you'll actually find. So, keep that in mind. Just keep looking all over the place. Look for these bags. Look for shiny spots. Look for treasure chests. Because, trust me, the items you find will be invaluable. Hell, even look out for subquests, too, while you're at it. Because the subquests offer really good rewards. Sometimes they even reward exclusive skills that you could only find through them. Like, skills that you cannot find on the Lilium Orb itself. Also, we just found Jet Black Feathers, and it was marked as a key item. So, Black Feathers that can be found throughout the world, no one is sure what sort of creature sheds them. So, this is a key item, but you can collect multiple amounts of them. In fact, I can 
think, I'm not sure if it's limited, but I think you could only collect up to 99 of them. But you're going to have to collect way more than 99 for a certain subquest later on. For now though, it's not the main focus, I just wanted to point that out right now. So let's just find this. Oh, apple gels. Actually, see if, if anyone needs it. I'll give one to Alvin. And, just, fuck it. And it's not like I'm using them anyway. Hooray! Two apple gels! <laughs> Even after I used three, screw it. Alright, land crabs right there. So that's some sea-related material items. So pretty much just keep an eye out for the icon and then you can figure out what kind of item it is. So this is uh, light related, I think. Pretty much anything that's related to birds or flying or whatever the fuck. Uh, it's, it's good to collect all varieties of materials. That's all I gotta say. And usually whenever you find a save point at the end of a path, that pretty much means you're near a town. So always take advantage of that. And here we are at the north region of the Lottie Trail, and we're reaching a new area, Hamil. 